Bad engineering. <laughs> Bad engineering. This is nuts. Here's what air does to it. Somebody's got a problem here. I got a fix. Hey, good morning, everybody. Before I show you the video I'm about to show you, I wanted to talk to you about something. I'm an engine builder, and uh, what that means to me is building engines, obviously, but it means building them better than they were already built. Or I'm not an engine builder. I'm just a parts hanger. I'm just a guy that you know, takes stuff apart and puts it back together. And that's a good start. I mean, you know, that's, we all start there. But after 34 years in my own shop, almost 50 years of doing this, I, uh, I, I want to make a better product. And so a lot of you out there are, are saying, my goodness, uh, he's trying, you know, he, there's problems here, there's problems there, there's problems everywhere. And uh, a guy I follow, Steve Morris, is an engine builder, and he, blow, he, he builds uh, blown motors that, that blow your mind. And uh, he doesn't build everything that I build, he's very specific and he's, he's a lot smarter than I am. But uh, I follow him because what I like about him is he, he just wants to find better and better and better. That's the best way I can explain it. And that's what I do as an engine builder. So the video I'm about to show you is going to talk about a 6-7 power stroke and some of the issues that we're having. Spun main bearings, sp you know, lost oil pressure in the, in the, oil, in the uh, camshaft. And some of my reasoning for that and some of the fixes that I think should happen. Every engine I build, every engine I build, I'm, I'm built this way. I want to find a better way to do it. So I'm looking for the failure points in them. And every engine, Ford, GM, Toyota, every engine has failure points. For good engine builders, we want to fix those. I'm going to find some things out here, and it's not pretty. It's kind of like you just want to slap some people and go, what were you thinking? So let me talk about this. This is the oil pan off of a 6.7. It's obviously cleaned and a lot better. Here's a block, and I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through here some of my concerns, and we're going to, we're going to figure out the truth about this. This pickup tube, I'm just curious. Oh my goodness. This thing is a full on inch and a quarter pipe. So first thing I want to find out is how much oil does that thing hold? Because here's, here's the first thing that I got issues with. So this is down, this pickup tube is down in the pan. And of course, this is where our sump sits. And this is where all the oil, uh, I think these things take 12 quarts of oil or something like that. This is basically where all the oil sits. That oil does not come up higher than this in the pan. It, it doesn't. So now we've got to fill all this up. Then it comes to here, which is the inlet side of the oil pump. And then the oil pump pumps it up. This is the front of the engine, the crankshaft. The oil pump pumps it up, then it pressurizes it, now it's pressurized, and it pushes it down through here, runs through this tube all the way down through here, and comes out right here into the, I've taped this up because the guy, uh, this customer wants a purple oil pan. Um, it comes out, feeds through the oil cooler here, and then goes back into the pan here, crosses the pan inside this tube here, to the other side, this is where the oil filter housing bolts to, Pre feeds the oil filter, goes through the oil filter, back into the engine and comes up this tube here. And, then it, and that hole there is right, uh, let me show you where it's at here, it, that hole there is right here. So that hole in the pan here. sits right there. Okay, so now we're gonna take we're gonna take some measurements here. We're gonna figure some stuff out. Let me get this right. There it is, right there, like that. Okay. So this engine's upside down. Here's my question: How much freaking oil is in all these holes in these tubes that drains out of the motor before it gets into the motor to the bearings? I'm going to take this gallon water jug and I'm going to start filling this stuff up. I'm going to do a little experiment because it's a concern to me. I, you know, my guess is there's two quarts of oil in here. 
So we're going to fill this stuff up with just some water and take a measurement and find out how much oil are we draining out of this thing before this engine charges up. Okay, here's an old bore brush that we use to clean out these bores and stuff. So we're going to just kind of like look here. So now, so the oil gets pressurized down through this hole. And if you look here, this is galley. Now we've pulled these plugs out of here because we brush motors, you know, we, we clean all this out. But then the oil comes through here, goes up through here. This is the cam. Now I want to show you something about the camshaft on this motor. Now this camshaft is wiped out a lobe on here, but so this is junk, but I, it, this is the camshaft out of a 6.7. So now the oil comes, the oil comes, pushes, gets pushed here through this oil port goes through the engine now it comes it come it's charged it charges this main up and this rear the oil here goes to this this is the cam bearing the rear cam bearing that rear cam bearing goes right here in this journal now look at the little hole here's a hole there's one right there look there's another hole another hole these are bearing journals on this cam this is what's like, I don't get it. You look in this block, now everybody that builds motors are gonna know. Normally, the mains would oil the cam bore. They, you just, they would have gun drilled this, this uh, journal right here to where the cam bearing goes. I've got the bearings out of it, but this is the, that, that's the housing that would house the bearing journal. All of them in here. Not this motor. I guess they thought it was smart enough that we're gonna, we're gonna lube every cam journal on that motor through this port by having that that the camshaft is hollow so now i gotta fill up this hollow camshaft i can pull this i'm gonna pull that i'm gonna pull that plug out of there and we're gonna we're gonna fill this camshaft up and we're gonna find out how much oil that holds before this engine sees lubrication on the bearing journals that's what i'm after here i want to know how oil starved this engine really is on a cold startup and that's what we're going to do okay so here's a brand new cam uh, that we're that, that we're going to put in a, a, a six seven. It's a performance cam, an upgrade, a stage one. They don't come with oil uh, plugs, but you can see how big the hole is in there. So I'm going to tape up all these holes here, just some tape. I'm going to wrap them up, and we're going to pour water in here. And we're going to find out what our volume is in this cam, what our volume is of oil uh, in the pan, and everything like that. I just need to cover the holes. Is all I don't need. We'll start filling this and we'll keep track of how much we got. That's how much the camshaft takes. Okay. Now we're going to fill up the oil cooler. Now this is the oil part of the oil cooler. This is where the coolant goes. So we're going to put this here. And this will take a little longer to fill because it will want to Whoop, whoop, whoop. Trying to be accurate here. It's about topping that off. So that's the oil cooler. Now this is your oil filter. Now this isn't going to fill up the way I'd like it to, but we're going to just tell you. I mean, <laughs> this is an old oil filter, but that's at least a quart. I mean, and, and guys, this is important. Most people aren't out there changing their oil. They're going to Jiffy Lube or, you know, their tire store or whoever. And man, you better hope the guy that's changing your oil takes the time to let this oil filter fill up with oil and doesn't just screw on one without oil in it. Everybody knows you should fill up your oil filter, your new one, when you change it with oil so that you're not pumping air through this thing. But let's just kind of see how much we can get in there. Okay, so we're done there. Okay. Now, I'm really not going to worry too much about filling up these, these galleys in the block. You know, we, could, we can make some assumptions that maybe there's a quarter of a quart in there. But let's, let's do this one now. Joey, hold this for me. Okay. So, so now, dump it out. Oh, 
Oh shit, that's a lot of... <laughs> okay. I think we got it. All right, and what we haven't got here yet is the oil pump housing that would sit here. The oil pump is going to drain, but we've definitely got a half a gallon, two quarts. I was kind of thinking two, two and a half quarts, so I was pretty close. Yeah, everybody get bad engineering. Bad engineering. This is nuts. You expect this motor to survive after an oil change when you drain all that out of there and also when it sits for a while? I don't know, but we're going to find out how long it takes to get oil pressure up to our bearings. Let me show you what air does up against oil. Oil. You want that on the bearing surface. Here's what air does to it. Pushes it right out of the way. You don't have any oil up against your bearing. It's, it's insanity. Somebody's got a problem here. So this, the power stroke, this is how they're, so they've, they've got these oil tubes sitting over the rockers. Now a lot of people don't know on this engine, they have got um, push rods for every valve. That's why there's just a ton of push rods in here. And those push rods go down to a lifter that looks like this. And in that lifter, there's two, this is the roller, the housing for it, and it's got two of these little lash adjusters, and those lash adjusters sit at the bottom of these push rods. Now everybody knows this motor is famous. There's so, uh, you read on the internet, there's so many people complaining, hey man, I changed my oil, and the thing just clatters forever um, after, I, after I have my oil changed. It clatters on startup, and it doesn't go away. It takes a while. This is why it doesn't go away. Remember the air and the oil? Whenever you introduce air into a hydraulic system, which is what oil pressure is, a hydraulic system, you're um, basically collapsing all these lifters, and that's what the clatter is. This is, and, and Ford has, has got a problem with this, and the other problem that I see in, in their lifters are, and I, I never like these kind of lifters, you can see there's little needle bearings in there. See those little needle bearings? Now, you go to a racing lifter, a roller racing lifter, they, they ain't got no needle bearings in that thing. Because I'm going to show you here on a piece of paper why. Here's a, here's a lifter that's, that's, that's failing. The pin is actually coming out of the lifter. And it's starting to fail. When that fails, you, you're going to grenade your motor. But let me, let me show you why needle bearings are not the way to go on heavy spring pressure. Uh, so if ever you do any performance work, you want to get away from this. Heavy spring pressure, you want to get away from this. And let me show you. Okay, I want to talk about the problem I have with needle bearings uh, in a lifter. And the best way I can do that, I think, is to show you something. So let me draw this out. Just use this. I'm not a good drawer, so I'm going to draw a half circle on that. And then I'm going to draw an outer ring like this. Okay. Our needle bearings are inside that lifter like this. And they're all the way around there. Now my point is, and a bushing's different, I'll show you how that works. My point is, is how much load is distributed on those little points of where the needle bearings touch the inner shaft and the outer shaft of that roller lifter. And that, that roller's turning on this. It's better, it's proven better, that's why racers do it. We put a bushing in here and it's solid. And it's a bushing is solid. And so we have an oil film running here and an oil film running here and we distribute the load much better that way. So a bushing all the way around in here, and this is solid like a bronze bushing, this is solid. You just get a little oil film in there, thousandth of an inch, and uh, it last takes a load better and it lasts a lot longer. So that's one of the things we want to look at for this oil. Uh, you know, the, the, the lack of lubrication, we want to try to figure out how we can best not have an issue with that. Okay, I've got a 6.7 built, ready to go in a, uh, a truck 
And I want to show you a few things. Somebody had said to me, what's all the blue tape for? We do that for safety. And look here, any, ho any opening, see we put an exhaust manifold on this side. We haven't done it on this side. We do that because, yes, it's true. I, we have put motors in vehicles before where we've dropped a little nut or something inside one of these in intakes or exhaust port and it's gone through the motor. We, you know, we have done that. And a simple thing like tape on there will, will, will keep that anything from falling in there until you're ready to put the component on there. Just a little tip. But come over here, I want to show you something. And we're going to do this test to prove my point about how much oil. This is where the turbo sits on this pedestal. And I believe one of these holes is coolant and the other is oil. I think this is the oil one here, but we're going to, we're going to find out which one. And we're going to, uh, whoop, and this is, my, this is my contention. I'm going to start the motor up in my sim test machine, and that'll be a, a, another video that I'm going to show you. It'll take me about a week. But I'm going to put this engine on my sim test machine without the fix in it, without the fix. And I want to see how long it takes before I charge this engine up, like we talked about, it's two quarts low when it drains out. How long does it take before I see oil up here? And this oil hole right here gets its oil pressure from the lifter galley. The lifters are right here. So I've got to, ch I've got to charge my main bearings. I've got to charge my uh, hollow camshaft. I charge my lifters, and then the turbo gets oil pressure here. And we want a time, how long does that take? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that 6.7 back there, I'm gonna put it in my sim test machine. I'm gonna run this thing up to 500 RPM, that's about cranking uh, speed when the, when the engine's starting, and I'm gonna see how fast I get oil pressure in there. That video, me testing it without my fix and with my fix will be in about a week, um, and follow me and we'll, uh, we'll have that ready for you. Thanks.